Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. Maxwell Asiga could not be making in today, but we hope he will be here next week. Big things have been happening all over the country and all over the world. And today, it is a day where we are asking the question, can Man City finally make it a treble in the domestic scene in England? Because they are in the FA Cup final against Watford at Wembley today in the afternoon. How will that match play on and how will it go? We have people here in studio who are going to tell us how that match will be going. On my far left, we have been ha having here Tyras Wayaki, who has been sitting in for Maxwell Wasike all the time here on the show. And then joining us here is football analyst Joe Sainer, a diehard Manchester United fan. And I can tell you for free, the guy doesn't like when we talk about Man City <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and joining him here is another upcoming football analyst, Samuel Mwana and Juguna. They are going to tell us everything that will be going on in the FA Cup final. But before we talk about the FA Cup final, yesterday during the day hours, it was about Maximiliano Allegri leaving Juventus at the end of the season. By night, here in Kenya, he was already fired by Juventus. What was their reaction? Joe? I think it was surprising thinking uh, what uh, Sam Allegra has made obviously at uh, Juventus. I mean if you look at the accomplishments, if you look at how he set up the team, mm -hmm. how he has controlled Cristiano Ronaldo as a personality and also as a player, um, it's, it's credit to him what he's done. Unfortunately, I believe the Juventus board is looking towards a long-term managerial position. I think this whole idea of having a couple of man managers coming in and out yeah. is something that the old lady of Turin doesn't want to repeat again. So it's sad though, but the good thing is that Allegri with his credentials definitely will have job offers coming his way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the caliber of Juventus players and the surrounding Turin, I don't think he'll get that sort of atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Samuel, it has been five years for Allegri at Juventus, 11 trophies that he is leaving them, I think four Scudetto that he has had with Juventus. Might it be a wrong call for Juventus to sack him at this time of the season? I mean, is it a wrong call or is it just about Champions League? Because mm -hmm. for me, I think it's about Champions League. Mm -hmm. This guy has gotten close, but he hasn't been able to lift the trophy. Mm -hmm. And bringing in Cristiano Ronaldo, Juventus board expected a, uh, a Champions League trophy at the end of the season. Yes. Uh, we know what happened. And I think they are looking forward in towards getting a manager whom they can be able to at least have him and think of a team that can be able to get to the level of Champions League. Right now we're seeing uh, Anubi, Tottenham Hotspurs, yes. into the UEFA Champions League final. Mm -hmm. That kind of speaks a statement because you have the likes of Kedira who have been in the UEFA Champions League final. You have Cristiano Ronaldo who is, who is a serial winner, yet that team could not be able to get to that level. I think that's what the board is looking at and saying we need somebody who can be able to get not just the best out of these players, but get the best out of the team and be able to prepare a team that can be able to go on and lift it maybe consecutively twice, thrice, even four times. Tyrus. We have been having this discussion since we started the show and Max Miliano is gone from Juventus. What kind of coach do Juventus will be looking for considering that he's been one of the best Italian coaches that Juventus has had? Well, first and foremost, let me just take you back a bit. Hmm. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yes. There was a rumor mill about Allegri's imminent departure. Yes. The media took it, ran away with it, coercing Allegri to come out in public and saying, no, uh, my job is safe. Uh, it's not always about the Champions League. I mean, look what I've done domestically. I've kept Juventus right up there with where they belong, blah, 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 blah. And then last night, he started trending. Allegri was tre trending at the top, especially here in Kenya, yeah. on Twitter. Uh, and it was all about his, his departure. And now we can confirm it this morning, he's gone. He's, he's no more, he's no longer at the helm and ship. Yes. The way they got rid of him was very wrong. It's quite unprofessional. And it could shake the team depending on how strong a bond he had mm. built with the players. Yes. What kind of coach are they looking for? I think he's just said it. They're looking for a coach who can win them the UEFA Champions League. Mm. Because that's the all-elusive title that Juventus have not been able to bag. Mm. Now, there's going to be names thrown around and we could be in for a surprise in whoever they settle for. Yeah. But will that coach, regardless of how talented he is, be able to hold this team together? This team has a lot of egos. There's big names in there. Chiellini, 
there's Ronaldo. And when you have such big names, they form camps. There's a Ronaldo camp, there's a Chiellini camp. Now, this is just me speculating mm -hmm. on the nitty, on the on those kind of flexibilities that are bound to happen in such a team. It has to be a coach who will be able to bring everyone on board and say, guys, look, what's happened has happened. I have nothing to do with it, but we have a common purpose together. And apart from retaining the Serie A, we've got to go for the Champions League. So whoever they bring on board has to be able to win them the Champions League. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, getting rid of Allegri in the way they got rid of him comes down to look bad on the board. The, the question goes back to who can that be? Uh, there the are names that will be mentioned. And of course, Mauricio Pochettino is top of those names. After all, he has taken um, Tottenham into the UEFA Champions League final. But I think for them, they're also looking at teams like um, Manchester United, which is struggling post Alisar Alex Ferguson. They will also look at Real Madrid, how it's struggling with our Cristiano Ronaldo. And look at their team and say, we have Chiellini, who's very old. We have Bonucci, who's very old. We have Kedira, who's getting older. We have Batuidi. They're also looking at somebody who can be able to rebuild that team. I think for me, Mauricio Pochettino, if he manages to get there, he's going to be the best fit for them. But is he going to go? Is Daniel Levy going to let him go? I don't think so. Joe, don't you think it's Conte's comeback? Uh, it can be, but again, one thing that we've missed out here is the director of football role in modern day football. Yes. We can have the best managers, we can have all these slick names coming up, but the director of football is one of those most important jigsaws in this puzzle. Yes. Why would I say this? Because of the transfer budget, first of all, the transfer location, yes. the names that are being scouted by the scouts in the mm -hmm. club. Yes. So we would bring in Pochettino. Pochettino has survived with the Tottenham team for almost going to three transfer windows without yes. buying a player okay he knows how to galvanize a team and go the team forward but you're going to a team called juventus which has money it is ready to sell even the likes of uh dibala yes you know so they're not afraid to flex their muscles mm -hmm. what they need not only is a proper manager with footballing knowledge but also a director of football with football knowledge well, it's going to be a tricky one there as this Juventus side will be looking for a manager who can steer them to Champions League football. But let's come back and talk about the big match that will be going on today. It is the FA Cup final between Manchester City versus Watford. Joe, mm -hmm. I know you hate Manchester City, so I'm going fast with well, you. Well, hate is a big word. Yeah. It's more of a, a dislike in terms of <laughs> conflict of interest. Huh? Conflict of interest. <laughs> the big question will be... Yeah. Is it now Manchester City ready to lift that treble at the domestic league in England? They have worked towards it. I think uh, Pep Guardiola's main task was to bring trophies to the, to the club. Obviously, he would have wanted the Champions League and a proper European uh, trophy to come his way. Yes. But that has, that has not worked because uh, of Tottenham. So I think today he will, he will pick up the FA Cup and it will be a springboard now to the next season because the transfer window is open again. And I'm sure he's looking at one or two players, clearly I haven't said three or four, like the likes of mm -hmm. you know, Arsenal or Manchester United. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, he's going to pick up the FA Cup. Yeah. Watford have done tremendously to get where they are. Yes. And, and it's unfortunate that they won't leave this cup. <clears throat> he's writing Watford off, and Watford was the team that defeated with a comeback against Wolves at the semi-final stage. How big will that match be for Watford this afternoon? I kind of have a soft spot for Watford because I think my late cousin was born in Watford mm. back in December 1960. God rest his soul in peace. Mm. But I have to borrow, not heavily from him, just lightly. I wouldn't write Watford off yeah. because they are here not through invite but on merit. And yes. the FA Cup is the underdogs tournament and this is the underdogs here. Yeah. I think Manchester City will have to earn their stripes. They'll have to fight at some point mm. very, very strongly and dig and really grit and grind to secure that FA Cup trophy. It won't come easy. Watford has been the team that slays the big guys in the English Premier League this yes. season. They've got a fantastic run of play, especially on the counter-attacks and the surprise attacks. Manchester City are very, very good. And we have seen that over the last 13 or 14 games they have featured in domestic-wise. And even in the Champions League, Tottenham really had to grind to see them off. Yes. So I'm seeing City winning this one, but it's not going to come without a struggle, I'm afraid. 
regardless of what the final score will be, they could score bags of goals. But for them to get there, they'll really have to have fought for it. But Bottom I, line. I think the difference between Watford and Man City in this game is that Manchester City lifted the trophy last, last weekend. These players are still jubilating all, all over the week. These players are still having that kind of, you know, it was very close season. It's only one point separating us in second place, Liverpool. And then you go back and say Champions League twice in a row, out, of, out by English teams. Again, that's something that is also in their minds. So I think if they're going to win this they have to, Pep has to come up with a talk that is very straight and tell them, you know what, we're looking for a third thing. It's, it's just like, because I feel what would have, have that hunger, that yes. urge. These players have a, have a trophy. Somebody's just going like, this morning I saw a trophy, the biggest trophy in England in, in my wardrobe. So I, I think this is a game where surprises can be pulled. And I think for me, I'm going to go for what for. Jesus. Well, Joe, yes, you're mm -hmm. let's talk about surprises. Yeah. Do you see a surprise the way we saw with Wigan mm -hmm. and Birmingham? I mean, you're talking about the oldest football association cup yeah. ever. Um, it springs surprises, obviously. Um, I would like, obviously, to agree with him, but I can't. <laughs> the reason is um, yeah. Manchester City, as much as I'm not delighted to talk about it, is a caveat above the rest. So uh, well, old machine. If you, if, you, if you look from the back all the way to the front, yes. Riyad Mahrez, before the last game last weekend, had not played for nine games. Yes. He comes in and he's, he bags goals. Mm -hmm. you, you get. Yes. The surprise in this game would be who's going to play for Manchester City and mm -hmm. who's going to affect the overall scoreline. Yes. Okay. We, we would have wished to have an Aguero moment last weekend, but you know, decide, the decide of one point was already set by the amount of you know goals that they had scored and what Liverpool are going through. So today, the likes of Troy Deeney, they'll give a good show for, for Watford. It's a respectable team. Yeah. Obviously, what they've done in the Premier League, but it's, it's a class apart from Manchester City, I well, have to say. It will be a battle of the coaches too, and one of the coaches will be there, will be Pep Guardiola. This coach it was actually named manager of the season in England. Tell us, how good is Pep Guardiola? Not no, as good as him, if his prediction comes <laughs> true. <laughs> if his prediction comes <laughs> true, yeah. I think this guy will be uh, the next big thing in Kenya yeah. and maybe beyond. Uh -huh. Well, Pep Guardiola, excellent. Yeah. And they've got a lot of man money in Manchester City. Yeah. And they bought the best coach that money could buy. Yes. Guardiola is amazing. This guy is winning the Premier League. Last, sat, uh, last Sunday, yes. and they win it in style. On the very last day of the season, yes. after going on, I think, 13, 14 games, winning on the bounce, boop, 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 yes. one after the other, mm -hmm. that's excellent. Yeah. And then on the plane back to Manchester, he picks up his laptop, opens it up, and he's reviewing the actual game itself. Yes. Brilliant. That's my kind of He's guy. looking ahead. Oh, yes. Yeah. He knows he's the leader. He can't afford to party as long as the other guys. So he puts the champagne back on ice and focuses on today's game. Yeah. Knowing full well that if they win it, they'll be the first male side from England to win a treble, a domestic treble. Yes. Manchester United won a treble that had the European Cup. So that's not a domestic treble. Yes. This is the League Cup, the English Premier League, and the, the FA, FA Cup. Cup. Yeah. Pep Guardiola is absolutely distinguished as a coach. The thing I like about him most is his hunger to win. Have you seen his CV in terms of trophies? Yes. Just look at the pictures. Mm -hmm. Not CV, I coached where, 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 the, the way we write CVs. No, just trophies. He's intimidating. But today... <laughs> Yes. He's going to be up a coach called Javi Garcia yeah. or Gracia of, of, of Watford, yeah. who is from Spain. He knows Guardiola. He knows the Spanish game. He knows Guardiola's mind. And he knows Guardiola's strengths and weaknesses. He yeah. knows where to hit Guardiola, at mm -hmm. what point to hit Guardiola, and how to do it. Yeah. So it's going to be a battle of wits. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it's a derby, yeah. the Spanish derby. But overall, I think Guardiola will have the last laugh. Some of the other managers, Joe, that were coming up for the manager of the season were the Wolverhampton 
coach, mm. the Wolves no, no. coach, yeah, mm. was also there. No, no, Espinosa was going for that trophy. We also had Jurgen Klopp because at 97 points, you thought that he was going to lift the trophy, but Pep was there with a one point better than him. How good is he, according to you? When you look at Pep, I mean. Pep is a brilliant manager. He, I think if the statistics are wrong or if they're correct, he's picked up 915 points combined in all his league league wins out of a possible 1,050. Yes. That, that, that statistic is just staggering. Mm. You, you get, yes. that's an average of 87 and above points per season. That in the is leagues. playing yes. football. Exactly, in the yes. leagues that he's played. So, Obviously, he's, he's brilliant, but I believe Nuno has done experientially well for Wolverhampton. I yes. mean, the same team that he brought up from the championship, yes. l bags of experience from the Portuguese side, mm -hmm. none of them on full-time contracts, on loans, and he has managed to get a seventh position. Mm -hmm. And now, in the beginning of the transfer window, he has, he has already confirmed the likes of Jota, uh, Ruben Neves is going to come in also. So, I believe if... If it was the other way around, if Wolves had that amount of money, yeah. Sawa, and had those types of players in them, I think he would have picked it, to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not dis discouraged, I'm not obviously saying that um, Pep doesn't deserve it, but I think from a player, coach, professional, yes. pound for pound, mm -hmm. I think Nuno would have been the best manager of the season. But for question would have been, uh, um, look at this, Nuno Espirito Santos and Wolves. He achieved great this season. Then look at the top uh, six teams Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Bay, Tottenham. Let's go for those four, forget the other two. Mm -hmm. The two are in their own league. These four teams lost so many games towards the end of the season. They were so sloppy. Mm -hmm. If it was Nuno Espirito Santos in one of those four teams, the way the team is, would it have been different? Yes, it would have because, not even that, if the fact that Manchester United did not change the manager and yes. kept on with Jose Mourinho, Wolves would have caught up with Manchester United and passed them. It's because of that fairy tale 10 match and beaten that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer brought to Manchester United mm -hmm. that they are where they are right now. I can tell you for free. Mm -hmm. Nuno would have actually edged in into a top spot for the Euro Europa Cup. Yes. I believe that. My reason why I give my vote to Pep Guardiola all year round is he makes players better. The player that Pep Guardiola inherits, the player that Pep Guardiola buys, the moment he is on Pep Guardiola's hands, that player changes. You look at Raheem Sterling, is not the Raheem Sterling of Liverpool. Look at the way he plays at Man City, he's a different animal. Look at Bernardo Silva, the way he's playing at the moment. is. Mm. It takes a player and molds that player to become a better player than the way he is. And when you look at the players he's coached all his time in football up to this moment, those players have been good football players that they have been. I so, agree. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that is my assessment of Pep Goodall. But next season is going to be a tough one also because now you've got one coach who has pushed the limit. To Pep Guardiola's level, and that is Jurgen Klopp. Mm -hmm. The thing will be, will he have the consistency? Because last year it was a 17 point gap mm -hmm. between Manchester United and between Man City and Manchester United. Mm -hmm. This season it is one point between Man City and Liverpool. So and 32 points between Man yeah. City and Manchester United. And Manchester United. <laughs> wow. Let's, let's just point that out. But, but <laughs> away from the English, uh, the FA Cup that is going on. We've got the championship players also mm. that are in the championship. Mm. And we saw last Leeds being bundled out by Derby County. Aston Villa getting the better of the West Bromwich also in that side. Mm -hmm. What do you make of Aston Villa versus Derby County to try and get into that position of getting into the I mean, Premier League? It will be a brilliant match. Um, but one thing to point out, um, Last, last year in December, Leeds were top of the league. Yes. And every other promoted team mm -hmm. that has been topped by Christmas. Yes. Okay. 
mm. was going either automatic promotion or win it. Yes. Okay. The fact that they they both lit it up, mm -hmm. okay, with a tremendous squad, with a, a very good coach, is just it's it's really downhearting. That being said, Frank Lampard came in. He did what he had to do as a manager, yeah. and he has brought you know Derby back to the days of Brian Clough, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a very good final. And um, I just really hope Derby gets it through. Because mm -hmm. Derby, for me, are the fairy tale story in this. Yeah. I mean, look at Sheffield United mm -hmm. finishing number two and automatic promotion. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, Aston Villa has been there, don't get me wrong, but I would love to see Derby again back with in the Frank Premier League Lampard. with Frank Lampard. Yes. It, it, was a tough, it will be a tough war between Frank Lampard and John Terry. Mm -hmm. Who will be the better player? Who will be the better coach? Derby are coming off the bounds of a fairy tale. Yeah. And. They are obviously the underdog. They thrive on that role. Mm. Aston Villa with John Terry, a strong side, but they need to keep their heads level. Yes. Between John Terry and Frank Lampard, it's, it's hard to tell who's a better coach because Frank Lampard has only just come into the game and he's done pretty well so far. This encounter is what's going to determine, mm. perhaps, Who's the better between the two? Let me not jump the gun and be excited about your question and say, oh, Lampard, oh, Terry. No, I think this particular encounter, the, the tactics they approach, the, the, the substitutions they make and the timings of those substitutions, how well their players can execute free kicks, you know, the small basic things that divide these two sides, that will tell who between the two is a better coach. And the 12th man, I mean, yeah. in Wembley, having the 12th man support is uh, it's important, yeah. Sam, who do you think will come up between uh, Derby and Astonville? I'm going to be a little bit selfish. I've never liked John Terry, but I'm very good. <laughs> 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 I've, I've liked Lampard, I love his play. So yeah. I'm just going to say Derby because I want to see them play in the in the EPL next season. Yeah. Or not because they're the best or they, they can be able to do it out. I'm just hoping they can pull out something, uh, rub it out of their hearts and, and surprise us. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was another match that people will be expecting to watch between Derby County and Aston Villa to see who will be getting that chance to come back into the English Premier League. But another twist of that, if Derby County actually make it to the English Premier League, good have Frank Lampard made the statement that he wants the Chelsea job? I think he should just stick with Derby. Yeah. Yeah. This thing of chasing the money yeah. all the time and chasing your heart because Ch Chelsea is close to his heart. He won yeah. the Champions League with Chelsea. Mm -hmm. He won the Europa League with Chelsea. Mm -hmm. He won domestic cups with Chelsea. But now that's Lampard, the player. It's yes. time for Lampard, the coach, the coach and manager. Mm -hmm. Let him build Derby. Even if they stay down, well, now that, that's different. Oh. Yes. But if they go up, let him stick with Derby. But if they stay down, he'll be tempted to move to Chelsea. Yeah. But then again, what, what, what are the odds that he'll do well at Chelsea in a Premier League? Mm -hmm. I, I think stick with Derby. You have followed the same sentiment. Yes, yes, stick with that definitely. Yeah. Whether they go up or they still remain the championship, earn yeah. your stripes as a as, as a manager. Mm -hmm. You just you just you you're still working on your UEFA badges. I mean, the pressure at uh, Chelsea Football Club right now to succeed mm -hmm. is enormous. You know, yeah. Roman Abramovich has said, you know what? Look, we we have been banned from a transfer window, so we need to use our loan systems to get yes. all these players in. Um, the pressure will be again to qualify for the Champions League next season. Yeah. And I'm not saying uh, Lampard doesn't have, you know, the essence of rejuvenating the players and telling them we can do this. But I believe what he's done at Derby is commendable. And if he can just push it again to another one season, yeah. he, you know, his experience will, will be better. Mm. For now, l let him stay away from the Chelsea job. Well, it's a big one there for Frank Lampard and John Terry who are trying to earn their stripes at the championship and coming up in the league. But also, now the transfer window is open and players have started to move and we're getting rumours. But we have had some confirmations of players who are moving. One of the players who is leaving Manchester United has got to be under Herrera. And also another player will be leaving Atletico Madrid at, at the very end of this season will be Antonio <coughs> Griezmann. The big question will be, Samuel, of all the players that Manchester United were to release, they released under Herrera. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pose that. Then roll back and ask, should you retain Popova? 
you know, because if you ask me between the two players, well, Paul Pogba is more talented than Herrera. We can't argue about that. But then again, who plays for the club? Who plays for the jersey? Who sweats to the last minute of a game? Herrera ticks all the boxes. Yeah. So if you ask me, I think Herrera is, is one person that United should have kept. But was, is he worth the amount of money he was asking for? That's up for debate. Joe, you have a soft, a serious soft fault for Manchester United. <laughs> How do you feel that Herrera is leaving Manchester United at the end of the season? Consider every fan out there, whether even that club by Manchester United, of under Herrera mm. betting with the Manchester fans and club goodbye. Every fan was like, this is the one player who should have remained with the team. I mean, he's been there for the last five years. Yes. And just just to recoin what he said, but on a different perspective, you offer Ashley, Ashley Young an extension, you uh -huh. offer Phil Jones an extension, you offer Chris Morley an extension, mm -hmm. and you let go of Herrera, the workhorse of the midfield. Mm -hmm. We are looking at having players who want to play for the badge. Mm -hmm. We are looking at players who want to play for the heart of Manchester United Football Club. Yes. We are not looking at commercializing players. We yes. are not looking at making this club be greater commercially. This is why the plot has been lost. It is unfortunate, again, that Herrera has gone. It is painful, actually. Yeah. To replace such a midfielder will take a, will take a while. Yeah. Because he can play as an advanced playmaker, he can also play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. It, that combination, even Pogba himself cannot accomplish. Okay, yes. so it's going to be it's going to be hard, but more so is the income is the actually the current transfer window because it's yeah. open. The link up between the director of football, who's still not it, uh, we have it hasn't been confirmed yet. There have been speculations on Fletcher. At some point, even Patrice ever ever was thrown into that. Rio Ferdinand. The problem is. It's good to have this good factor that former players can come in and rejuvenate the club, but they have the expertise to sit down and say, fine, we need this certain player. Can, we, can I go and negotiate with this, with this you know, agent? Mm -hmm. Can the scouting system understand where we need to go and look for this player? Mm -hmm. You can know them off the top of your head. Yes. As an analyst, I can tell you, I, we need Toby at the back and Kolibai. Okay, those are the same things Jose Mourinho said and he was told no. There needs to be a better structure even before we go in for these players. Wow. I think I was, I was listening to Alex Ferguson in one of his interviews. Right now he does teach about business. And what he was saying is, for me to sign a player, I used to go and look at the mother. Mm -hmm. I want to meet the mother of the player. Mm -hmm. Personally, I want to meet the mother. If the mother, you convince the mother that you own that player, and you show the mother why that player should be in that club, the player will not have a problem, the agent will not be a problem. Look at right now, I, I don't know what Fred does in the midfield, I don't know why he was signed, but my guess is because Man City had also been linked to Fred, that's why United bought Fred. But if you ask me who can replace, who can best replace under Herrera, I don't have that answer. Last season there was Milik Milikovic Savic, right? this season he's nowhere to be seen, mm -hmm. he, he, he has gotten lost somehow. And if you ask Manchester United, what do you need to do? Whom do you need to sell? Those are questions that have been asked time and again. Sure. Hey, hey, can hey, solve hey, the problem? Hey, Herrera is not the only player. Antonio Griezmann is also living at Atletico Madrid, probably to Paris Saint-Germain or Barcelona. What, how bad will it be for Atletico Madrid to lose Antonio Griezmann? Well, it's, it's bad, but not as bad as Manu losing Herrera. Mm. Because Atletico Madrid, as long as you fit into their footballing culture, they are good to go. They've gelled as a team. Although there's the, the kind of school of thought that says they have reached their peak. Uh -huh. So for Atletico Madrid, I think they need to retain the same footballing culture for now, but start rebuilding. Mm -hmm. And that may involve also doing away with their their manager, Diego Simeone, mm -hmm. and the question, the six million dollar question becomes then who will come on board? And whoever comes on board, will he retain their footballing culture that has got them to two Champions League finals yes. in, uh, the, within the span of a few years, yes. in recent times? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's bigger than this one departure. Mm -hmm. With Atletico Madrid, you have to sit down and look at them in terms of restructuring mm -hmm. the team to make it relevant mm -hmm. going into the next season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big job at Atletico Madrid, though it's not as obvious as it is at United, 
but it is a big job. There's issues to do with a generational change mm -hmm. and perhaps even a managerial change. At Atletico Madrid. At yeah. Atletico Madrid. And the, the, the on, not only Griezmann, yes. Godin is going, mm -hmm. um, Costa is going to China. Mm -hmm. So again, they are losing three to four players who are critical in the framework of the first 11. Yeah, yeah. One team that is actually rebuilding at the moment has got to be Real Madrid. And Jovic is the mm -hmm. first player they have signed from Eintracht Frankfurt, the 17 goal kid for Eintracht Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a great wonder kid for Real Madrid and Zinedine Zidane? He's going to be a long term replacement for Karim Benzema. Mm -hmm. um, and that is it. How good is he? He's, he's brilliant. He's done very well in the Bundesliga. But again, once you go into the La Liga, it's a different type of play, obviously. That's one, two. The yeah. stakeholders that have been there who have mm -hmm. been mentioning that number nine position, mm -hmm. he has been there for the last how many seasons? Six, seven seasons, Karim yeah. Benzema. Yes. So again, I look at it as a long term replacement. Um, but the speculation. And all, and all the later confirmation of Hazard has to be a very big play yeah, for them. For them, has to be a very big play. They've been trying to replace that Cristiano factor. Mm -hmm. They tried so much, even pushing Bell into that position, but it didn't work out. So I think for him, it will, he'll be a right fit from, for Real Madrid. Well, we have been talking about players who are exchanging clubs and coming into the game, but we have also got to bet goodbye the players who have made the game what the game has it today. And one player who will be leaving the game come the end of the season will be legendary goalkeeper Peter Cech who played for Chelsea and also Arsenal. What will you miss about Peter Cech as he leaves the game? I think I did a story on him. He, he's been a very brilliant goalkeeper. If you look at his story, if you look at what he has achieved, I, I think he's one man people will miss really much. But I think um, at, at the peak of him at Arsenal, he has done a few mistakes that have not been so impressive. But I think he's one man that uh, a young goalkeeper like Leno, staying with him, mm -hmm. must have learned something from him. Because he's one man who is talkative, first of all. He loves training. And I hope he can come back into the game as a coach, uh, as a, a goalkeeper coach. Yeah. Van Passi is another player leaving the Van. game. And yeah, I think he has given you some good memories over the years. <laughs> he won us a title, that's so <laughs> yes. true. I mean, he has been a brilliant servant. Um, you know, being under the shadow of Thierry Henry at Arsenal Football Club was not easy, obviously. Yes. And once he got that breakout, you saw what he could do. Mm -hmm. And again, the likes of Manchester United saw that and said, you know what, this guy can actually win you, you know, a, 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 you know, a cup. What he's done for Holland cannot also be mistaken. <laughs> that that <laughs> goal, <laughs> that goal right now you see on our TV, yeah. the that, flying that, Dutch that's one. What I'm told. Like, you can know, you it's remember that? that it's that unfortunate he never got to win the World Cup <laughs> yeah. again. But, but that been, goal was one of the best. It was one of the best. Yeah. Obviously, we can't forget another servant who's leaving, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel De Rossi. De Rossi, 17 yeah. years at Roma. Uh -huh. You don't get these gladiators anymore in the game. Yes. So obviously, bid him also farewell. He's yeah. been an immense servant for the yeah. Italian for, for the Italian team and also for AS Roma. Also, Savi, Andre Savi is another player who's leaving. Your best memories of Savi will be of. Oh. Uh, in my other incarnation, when I used to do this job, those were the stars. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he held on through the years mm -hmm. and never went below par yes. is simply amazing. That is something that is perhaps going to be missing in the new generation of players mm -hmm. who've had it a bit too easy. They become mm -hmm. millionaires even before they've kicked a ball. Yes. This guy is that bridge between the old school footballers mm -hmm. and this new breed of players mm -hmm. like Rashford who are stars, big, big stars, even before they've earned those stripes. Yes. So I, I salute what he did to the game mm -hmm. and I'll definitely miss that footballing culture, that footballing spirit, the dedication of playing for the badge whenever you come out to kick that ball, mm. his creativity, his school of thought, his amazing creating something out of nothing, yeah. gold out of dust, mm. something solid out of pure ash. This is a magician who football will remember and he'll be on the right side. For ages to come. Oh, yes. The question actually, will be... Just to interject on yes. that, and thank you for mentioning Rashford, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's always been this comparison, and I'm a Manchester United supporter, and I'm going to say it right now. There's this, uh, there's this um, comparison of Rashford and Mbappe. Yes. Okay. But just to let you know, Joshua King, 
who's been playing for Bournemouth, mm -hmm. has outscored Rashford in the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a hungry player mm -hmm. versus a Manchester United player. A player who thinks has made it. L let's just put that in comparison. Yes. Joshua King, mm -hmm. two seasons back to back, yeah. has outscored Marcus Rashford. A big one. We have the, problems. The, the, the thing is, my, my director is saying that we've got to look at the stars, the clean sheets of Peter Check, and ask ourselves, mm -hmm. Which goalkeeper will ever get to those clean sheets? Uh, we've got the Peter Checker 202, mm -hmm. David James, a former England, coming there at 116. Mark Schwarz, I think, played for Fulham at 151. David Seaman, the legendary Arsenal goalkeeper, mm -hmm. coming at 140. And then Nigel Martin, Martin coming at 137. So, at 202 mm -hmm. clean sheets. I th Which I goalkeeper in the current generation can get to that level? Yeah, I remember. There are a number of them, but will they stick to the club? That's <laughs> the thing. For me, I would go for Kasper Schmeichel. I mean, yes. he will stick with Leicester City yeah. day in, day out. You're looking at Nick Pope, a young goalkeeper coming up also. Um, but if you look at these other keepers that might stay, uh, you know, Alisson, yes. you have to mention him. Ederson, you have to mention him, but are they going to stay at Liverpool and Manchester City, respectively? I think, I think if for De Gea, that period, if the hair stays right now, he's uh, he's around 100 and oh. something. Mm -hmm. If he does stay, he could be able to be that. But if he doesn't stay, who, the, that's the biggest question because what happened this season maybe is the biggest calamity of his life. Yes, but there's also that up and down. If he does stay, I think he's the best, he's one of the guys you would say he can quickly get to that level. Yeah, yeah. Well, very true. true. Final word, where will you be this afternoon? Between Manchester City and Watford, the score will be? Oh, about score of, I pretty much cannot point. Uh, let's go for four goals from Manchester City, mm. but they'll have to really work their socks off for those four goals. They could come from behind, God knows, mm -hmm. but they have to really end it on a high. Yeah. Four goals from Manchester City, perhaps one or two from Watford. Uh, I'll, I'll go with him with a goal goal ratio. Yeah. Obviously, Watford are going to score a couple mm -hmm. of goals. So I think the game will end at a 3 2. And a 3 2 is a surprise hatch at the end of the day from Pep. 2 1 uh, in favor of Watford. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the bookies so, are really uh, boiling their heads when they're listening to you right now. Eh? Yeah, so it might be a dream final. <laughs> Let's say a very good thank you to the people who have come and met this show, what it has been here today. A great show that we have had. Tyrus Weyaki here, who has been sitting in for Maxwell Wasiki, has been great. Joe Saina, a very able analyst and co host, is also here for the fans on. And Samuel Mwananjuguna. Special thanks. To, Titus Mula, to Simon Mulama, sorry, who will be on Channel 1 to talk about the end of the Bundesliga, but was also here to talk about the Africa Cup of Nations and the Mashemeji Derby. Talk about our very good crew that has made our show come here, our sound ladies, our camera ladies, and our gentlemen here. And don't forget our producer, Emmanuel Ndavula, MJ, our directors, Fadili, and Brian Kims. We say a very good thank you. Enjoy your afternoon here on Y254.